what was your I'm going to die moment, I was driving home in a bad thunderstorm, when suddenly the wind became insane, I pulled my car off the highway onto an exit when suddenly a limb off a tree, sailed through the air, and cracked my windshield, so I hit the brakes, a second later, the car began to lift slightly off the ground, I thought for sure I was going to die, moments later, the storm had cleared, windows in shops all around were blown out, I got home, and turned on the local news, apparently a tornado passed directly through where I was, in my car, almost drowned in the ocean, got pulled out, and couldn't get back in, waves kept crashing over my head, and pushing me down until I couldn't figure down from up, I was so exhausted from fighting to get ashore, and getting my head above water, I would just pop out, and another wave would push me under, I just gave up at one point and I, so clearly remember thinking, so this is how I die, and it didn't seem a bad way, to go at that moment, then suddenly I felt a hand around my arm and a jet ski pulled me up out of the water, and gave me a lift back, I know that experience, making peace and accepting death, it's a weird feeling bc it's not, like you give up, you just physically can't go anymore, once you accept it, your mind becomes at ease, the panic and fear fade, and there's a moment of reflection and peace, that changes your whole perspective after surviving, at least that was my experience, I respect that you fought enough to get rescued, and that you made it out alive. Me and my friend went out on a Saturday night, and on the way home the car in front of us didn't move, when the light turned green, because he was having a conversation with people on the street, when the light turned green he still, didn't move so my friend goes around him, all of a sudden he rear ends us, and drives around us M, pulls out a gun and starts shooting, luckily no one was hurt, we call the cops and they took a report, but didn't do anything after. Last year I went out climbing with a friend just her and I, I've always gone climbing with her and another friend, never just the two of us, and she's a bit spassy, she warned me, that she wanted to do a climb, that I might have to climb my own rope to get through, if I fall away from the wall, and can't get back on, well that happened, I never climbed my own rope before, but I found myself with some gear on my harness 200 feet off the ground, and tried to figure it out, it was August, I was 20 pound heavier from quarantine, hence why I fell off the climb, and was dangling unable to reach the wall, I was baking in the sun, and had no idea how to climb a rope, I didn't carry my phone on me at the time, but I had a watch, so I paid attention to the passage of time, I'm dangling for 30 minutes now, I'm 90% of the way to rigging up a self rescue system, but I'm just not getting it to capture progress, when I pull on the rope, I see someone coming up the climb next to me, and I yell down for help, he gets closer to me, and at a comfortable ledge, he's talking me through a self rescue system, and despite his harsh and snarky attitude, I appreciated his help, I'd been dangling for over an hour and a half at this point, in direct sunlight with hip flexors going into atrophy, and one leg numb at a time, while I hug the other leg, eventually my partner lowers me on the rope to the ledge, where the random climber was, and I rappelled down with his party, when we finally got to the ground we heard sirens, another female climber my age died that day on the same cliff, her gear ripped out of the wall, and she hit the ground, I had climbing harness trauma for 2 weeks my hip flexors hurt a lot, and I couldn't do physical activity really, I had a lot of survivors guilt for months after, you can die in less than 15 minutes from harness trauma, and I was hanging in direct sunlight in mine for 2 hours, I've since learned rescue techniques, in climbing scenarios after not visiting that cliff for a year after the incident. Did the full Northridge route on Mount Stewart and the Enchantment Range in Washington state with a buddy, we were equipped for an up and over in a day, and had spent all summer working hard to be ready for it, we both ended up with the hersey, squirts halfway up from some bad food the night before, which slowed us down to a snail's pace, there is no place, to bail out on the route, so we topped out after dark, and had to bivy just below the summit with no water and two energy bars between us, longest night of my life and to top it off my partner, started hallucinating in the middle of the night, made it out the next day after a chilly night in an emergency blanket, taking a huge hit off a bong, and seeing my heart rate spike to 240, I literally turned to my wife, in a very every calm considering the situation, first, I need you to stay as calm as possible, I'm calling 911, 
My heart rate is 240. I have less than a minute to explain this. Went over CPR as succinctly as I could. Gave her ambulance instructions. And indeed very nearly pass out as my heart started to give. I was terrified. But I knew I either panicked and likely heart attacked. Or remain absolutely calm despite my terror at seeing 240. And make sure I had the best chance to get out. That's how I learned I can smoke joints. Or do vapes. But I cannot rip bongs due to some genetic thing. That makes my heart overreact to too much THC. Scariest effing moment of my life. Overestimated my swimming capabilities and stamina. Bunch of friends and I were swimming in an artificial lake. These lakes are dug up next to rivers as a way to store water when the river water levels rise. So these are usually very steeply banked and very very deep. So we decided to cross the lake on a floaty just for fun. On the way back, one of us let go of our beach ball and it slowly started floating away. I stupidly thought to myself, oh I could get it, and let go of the floaty, and started swimming towards the ball. But of course the ball just kept floating away faster than I could reach it. So then I gave up, and tried to swim to the shore. The shore was just about 15 meters away, but I could not feel the lake bed. Panic was starting to set in. Because I was already tired from chasing the ball, I started swimming to the shore, but wasn't able to keep going. At this point I was thinking to myself, oh shy I'm going to drown. Somehow managed to dig into my final reserves of energy and swim enough to be able to stand on the tippy toes of my feet. I could have called out for help, but I didn't. And seriously I don't know why. I was swimming of the coast, and hoping to catch some waves. I noticed a really nice one, and started to turn. As I turned I noticed a sea turtle in the wild and was distracted. After a split second the wave hit and sent me spinning underwater. Before I managed to stop spinning and get to the surface, I thought that that was it. I now have a fear of the open ocean. I was maybe 7 to 9, no older than 10, and at the beach with my parents and twin brother made a friend. And we were having a ton of fun in the ditch that formed between the sandbar and the shore where it was deep and calm but not open ocean. Every once in a while a big wave would pull us around, or come crashing over the sandbar, but otherwise it was great to paddle around on my boogie board, until I was too close to the sandbar and a wave sucked me out, over it and into the big waves. I can just remember a tunnel vision of my brother and friend yelling, and my dad doing, that parent walk of osh the kid is in trouble as I'm frantically kicking against the big wave I can feel pulling me, I can still feel the tug on my legs my body, the board bouncing and trying not to let the front of it dip too far and swamp me, probably would have drowned, if that happened, I don't remember riding the wave back in, just that I got out of the water, and spent at least an hour in the shade on the towels, was told that it was a big wave and I basically disappeared in the froth, until dad pulled me out by an ankle, two hours later, and I was back in the water again haha, <laughs> I love the ocean, and was apparently too dumb as a kid to be traumatized. This was around 2000. I was walking through downtown late at night. Got to the corner when I heard two people yelling at each other. One of them pulled a gun and pulled the trigger. The bullet missed and hit the corner of the building I was next to. I got hit with a small sliver of stone across the cheek. Thought nope. Turned back the way I had come and took off running. Another one was in 2008. Late night again. I was coming home from buying some sandwiches from a nearby gas station. I passed a white castle, and saw three men yelling at this woman. I paused a moment, then resumed walking. When she started yelling back, I heard no fear in her voice. So I shrugged, and went on my way. Almost made it home, when a car pulled in front of me, and the three guys jumped out, and started asking, why I had run. I hadn't run at all. I tried explaining that, but they kept it up, getting closer to me, and threatening me. I was terrified, and was looking for a way to escape. I looked towards the building I was living in and paused there, thinking if I could get inside, I'd be safe. One of them looked that way as well, and saw the police car in the parking lot. The place was public housing in a somewhat dangerous area, so we had a police officer who lived there, and did patrols inside and outside. He must have seen it, because next thing I know, they jumped back in their car and drove off. I fainted. I had fainted I think on one or two other occasions before, but this time was different. When I fainted, I woke up still on the floor unable to move. I'm fully aware of what just happened, and I can't move. 
I didn't know if my head was leaking with blood or something lol, it wasn't thank goodness, and it happened in the bathroom, I always lock the door when I'm in there for some reason, so I thought I was just gonna lay there and die, so no one would know, I'm thinking to myself damn this is it, I'm dead, I was trying my hardest to move, and then finally, after about a minute or so I was able to move my fingers, then my arms, legs, and I was good to go. IDK if it's normal for fainters, to be unable to move after passing out, because the previous time I fainted, that wasn't an issue. But whatever, at least I lived lol. I was at least 8 to 9, and at the water park with my cousins and grandparents. My cousin and I went into the wave pool with donut floaties, my other cousin left, and then my other cousin I was currently with got out of their floaty, and swam to the stair things on the side of the pool. My cousin was a better swimmer than me, but I didn't want to be left behind so my dummy got out of the floaty, and tried to swim to the stairs. It was right at the wave started, so little 8 to 9 year old me was trying to swim, literally doggy paddling, which is in fact not very effective when swimming. And I felt the water start to engulf me. I started to gasp for air. Felt myself choking on water. It was so horrifying. I obviously survived. That was probably the closest thing where I thought I'm going to die. Also, when I think about it, I don't know if the lifeguards would have seen me if I had drowned. Because I was so small and the pool was crowded. It still freaks me out to this day. New fear unlocked after that. Fear of drowning. I had a weird medical emergency, to preface, I'm not diabetic, and I don't have any issues with blood sugar, but one night was just in my room and I started to feel faint, I went upstairs to be in a room with someone else in case I passed out, but then it got even worse, I couldn't put a sentence together, I then realized I had vomit all over my shirt, but I didn't remember vomiting, I can't remember the number they said. But I remember them saying my glucose was dangerously low. When they checked it in the ambulance, I can only describe it as I felt drugged. I was on pain medication at the time, and in the moment I thought I may have confused it with another pill I take, which would have made like 16 milligrams of hydromorphone in total L. I was panicking thinking I was overdosing. Everything feels fuzzy the world around me started to have a vignette. Scary stuff. But in the end. I really got no explanation for why my blood sugar dropped suddenly. Wife and I traveled to China in 2010 for a holiday, was last minute, so booked a private tour, private buses and drivers everywhere etc. One day, wife and I decided to sit at the front of the bus to get a better view of the countryside as we drive from our city hotel to whatever tourist destination it was that day. Within 10 minutes of leaving the city limits and lined streets into the single lane countryside roads, I had accepted that I was going to die. The driver was overtaking on blinds corners, driving 3 and 4 cars wide on narrow bridges, with 3 and 4 cars slash trucks coming the other direction, speeding on dirt roads. Everything that goes against driver safety, I held my wife's hand and just held my breath for the next 30 minutes until we arrived and sat at the back of the bus for the remainder of the holiday. As a kid my mom always used to take me white water rafting. Now this was fun at the time and I was a fearless one. At around 11 to 12 my mom, my stepdad and brother all set out in a four man raft and put me in the very front. What I didn't know is that it was a class 5 dam release day. Basically there was a dam that released water into the river and it was on full release and they didn't tell me the water and rapids were class 5. As we set out I noticed there is something seriously wrong. The raft we were in started to deflate as we get thrashed around in the water. There is a section of the river that is seriously bad. It's like a small cliff where it immediately drops with two holes circling of water that if you get trapped in you are done. And we had the unfortunate opportunity of flying off of the drop because we had such a small raft it started to flip over as soon as we dropped. As the raft was flipping it took me into a moment of realization. Like wow this is really happening as we flipped it felt like slow motion. I rack my brain to think of the training I had done. Because of my mom being a river guide, I slammed into the water and it immediately threw my body forward with my feet over my head. I lost my sense of bearing and I had no idea what was up and down. Meanwhile I was being thrashed and slammed against rocks struggling to understand what was happening. Then I slammed against a rock with just my head and let out a spurt of air. I was in a hole 
Constantly rotating as I felt the water start to fill my lungs I made a desperate attempt from my training to swim horizontally to the current. As I reached, it started to black out from the massive amount of pressure from water in my lungs. I had no idea how long I was under, but it was at least a minute or two. My brother ended up pulling me up in the upside down raft. He saved my life. That day and the excess water I threw up did not taste good at all.